Chef Wayne Bush and Chef uh, Tom Curtis is here. Wayne Bush here, Tom Curtis there. Gentlemen, thanks for coming. A tunic oyster bar, and you are making us this morning, is it, uh, it's oysters wrapped in filet mignon. Actually, yes, yeah, stuffed filet mignon and stuffed with oysters. Stuffed filet mignon with yeah. oysters. Yeah. How, wh what do you do? Drill a hole through the filet mignon? Yeah, How does this work? We're going to show that, I guess, in the second segment. We'll okay. Where some of the some of the ingredients. Are. All right. So you just make a little incision in there and stuff the oysters in there. You can you can you know tie it if you want to, mm -hmm. but if you don't mind them coming out a little bit, you know, like poke out after you kind of cook sure. it. But um. Now this is something that's on the menu. Uh, yeah. This is actually we're doing this on a wine dinner. Uh, on a wine dinner. Yeah, on the 16th we have a few seats left. Okay. So uh, next week on a Wednesday night we're going to be doing that as one of the main courses. Uh, you want to use a center cut fillet. Okay. And uh, some shucked oysters, about three per fillet. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, fingerling potatoes. They're nice because they're a little bit harder when you cook what, them what, off. What are these called? Fingerlings. They're uh, fingerlings. Yeah, French fingerlings. So yeah. they, well, you can actually, see they, they kind of look, look like, like a finger. Yeah. There. yeah. Um, and when they cook up, you steam them off first, and then you, we're going to pan sear them. Mm -hmm. So that's something you could do ahead. Uh, we have the Brussels sprouts. Now, see, that's you're starting to lose me there. You don't like that? Uh, well, we're going to do them a little differently. We're going to caramelize them. So you take them, cut okay. them in half, salt and pepper the pan. And then roast, roast oh. and pan side down. Uh, and real quick, the yep. rest of the what we yeah, have the sauce is a uh, little beef demi glaze, which is a veal stock reduction, uh, Madeira wine, right. uh, butter, and a little Dijon mustard. Well, it looks fantastic. So in the se in the second segment, we actually say we're going to start to cook some of this and drill a yeah. little hole in there and yeah. put it in there. Sure, okay. Okay. sounds good. All right, thanks very thanks much, so guys. We'll see you in just a few All minutes. Right. Back to you. We're combining two of my favorite things in the kitchen: oysters and filet mignon. If you guys can do something with popcorn and peanut butter, we're really going to be, uh, yeah, we'll we're really going to be rocking roll. All right, <laughs> sounds good. First of all, tell me a little bit about, because we talked a little bit about the dish, and we'll get more back to that in a minute, but tell me about this uh, wine dinner that you guys have coming. Yeah, on the 16th, we're going to have a wine dinner. It's uh, five courses. Uh, it's going to have oysters, uh, uh, clams. We're going to have a nice salad. And then this the choice of this or oyster stew with a lobster tail. Now, here's my question. When you're talking about seafood, you're typically, uh, right, you're going with a, a white wine usually? Typically, yeah. Okay. Uh, so what happens when your seafood is inside beef? What do you well, I could go either way, that way. You know, I mean, okay. I, I like to say if it's something that you like to drink, okay. why not just drink that? I you agree, because right? I'm, I'm a red wine fan. Right. I mean, and things I... have certain affinities, but... You know, if you feel like drinking a Pinot Noir with a steak, well, go ahead. Then by golly, you right. should do it. Right. And that's what I would definitely do, too. You right. would? You go with a Pinot Noir? Is that yeah. one of your favorites? Yeah, because that goes well with fish, seafood, and steak, so I usually go with that myself. Awesome. Well, we're going to start cooking up this uh, delectable treat in just a moment. The recipe and ingredients are on foxprovidence.com. For now, though, over to you guys. Hey, welcome back to the Roadshow Kitchen. Joining us today, Chef Tom Curtis from the Matunic Oyster Bar. And we're not just cooking oysters, are we, Elizabeth? No, I have to say I'm a believer. I have uh, just I'm tasted a uh, one of your one of Tom's uh, Brussels what, sprouts. What, what is you know? I see the secret stash. I always I always isolate uh, and identify the secret stash. That's why you get in here first. I have to tell you, there are a lot of people who don't like Brussels sprouts. Vince seems to be one of them. I think you might change your mind. Even you didn't like Brussels sprouts. Yeah, when, when I was a little right? kid, pushed them off to the side of the plate. Yeah. It's all good. But hey, listen, I got news for you. Mm -hmm. I'm not paying 18 bucks for Brussels sprouts. <laughs> Tell them what we're really making. Yeah. Well, we've actually got a lot more than this. Mm -hmm. What we're doing is we're stuffing filet mignon um, with oysters. That's right what here. We're that is so about. cool. I have a filet. Okay. That, um, first thing you're going to want to do uh, when you prepare it is actually make an incision so that you can stuff it. Okay. And what I do is just lay it on the side mm -hmm. and go against the grain of the meat here. Okay. Just putting the knife straight down. Try not to go all the way to the cutting board. This way you don't make more holes on the outside than you need to. Okay. Turn the knife around. Mm. And now we're going to stuff these with your own uh, matunic oysters? Yes, actually we grow our own matunic oysters. They, uh, in the backyard? In the backyard, literally, <laughs> and they come right up to the dock. Um, right next to uh, where you get your great wow. outdoor seating. That so. is so cool. I know we have a few here. Do you want to just show us how you stuff these in? How many yeah. do you put in? Um, why don't you I do it, Elizabeth? Why don't you stuff You want to give it a no, shot? No, I don't. <laughs> actually, I don't have any gloves on. Well, actually, oh. I, you can fit two to three of them in there. Okay. Um, depending on the size of the filet that you're using. This one, I got two in there right now. You don't want to try to do too much. Okay. Um, have it stick out, but 
two was look, looking good for this one. Yeah. Sean was saying this is like stuffing a, a Beamer inside a Mercedes. Right. You know what I mean? It's like good and better. It's like a great car inside of a great car. <laughs> now, Tom, tell us a little bit about, uh, I understand you got some holiday hours and uh, some, maybe some special holiday dishes going at the restaurant? Yeah, actually, uh, we're normally just open Thursday to Sunday this time uh -huh. of year. Um, but what we're doing is, because we know everyone's going out on the weekends shopping and yeah. things like right. that. So starting on the 16th, which is when we're doing this wine dinner, um, all the way until the 1st, we're going to be open every day of the week, except for uh, Christmas Eve and Very Christmas cool. Day, okay. so that people can get on the weekdays, yeah. too, and try to come visit That's us That's great. You know, we you, will you have a special menu, or pretty much the same menu? Um, we're going to keep the same menu throughout, except okay. for our special menu on this uh, wine dinner that we have. Right. And then on New Year's Eve, um, we're going to have some special dinners for two, some glasses of wine, stuff Super. like that. Super. Very nice. Okay, so what do, what do we do now? Yeah, I, I well, love the look of the filet, and I haven't even tasted it. Right I know. Now, I got this. my this pan hot, thing. about medium high. Uh, and get your oil in there a little bit before. Mm -hmm. Salt your uh, steak up. Now, I don't usually use oil when I when I cook a steak. Should should I be using that? It just makes it not stick and gives well, it yeah, a nice when, flavor? When you're searing something like this, you want to use oil. And actually, okay. you want to use vegetable oil, not olive oil, because the temperature that it burns at really? is actually higher. So that way, the pan doesn't get brown and you don't sear the outside wow. of the steak too much, which is tends to be a problem when you're searing things yeah. that you can overcook it really mm -hmm. easily. Now see, I cook everything in olive oil and, and, yeah. and probably that it's I'm, the default, I'm, doing, right, right? Yeah. I'm yeah. doing some things wrong at, with some certain foods. Now I know you're also going to put some fingerling potatoes yep. in there as a nice side. Uh, how long will you keep this on this side before you flip it? Um, I'm going to do this for about a minute and a half, maybe okay. two minutes tops on each side. Right. Um, and what that's going to do is just keep the juices in it. Okay. Right. So that way, once it goes into the oven after that, it's going to have all those juices from the oyster and from the steak still inside there. Very cool. And when well, it goes, go ahead, Ben. I'm sorry. I'm just going to say, that's a thick piece of beef, so that's going to take it a is. little bit of time to cook, no? Well, actually, once you put the slice in it and you have the oysters on the inside, right. you really now, you have two smaller pieces of beef. It doesn't mm. take as long as if you kept it whole. Mm -hmm. And since you sear the outside, you're getting a little bit of a... So give a time frame once it gets in the oven. Once you get in the oven, if you're if you want to have it around medium rare, which is how I recommend serving the steak, mm -hmm. you're looking about eight to ten minutes. On um, what degree? That's about 425. 425. Yeah, okay. Now yeah, we only have about a minute left. So okay. do you have one prepared for us? I actually right? do have one already set up. It's in the oven. I can take out right, right now. Let's go Super. ahead and do that, and I'll keep an eye on this one for you. Yeah. All right. Or or should I say, even better, I'll keep Vince away from it. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good thing too because but that's I, looking good. Doesn't it look good, and I thought it was really. You, interesting. I'll tell you what, I'll make a deal with you. Yeah, you can have the Brussels sprouts. I'll have that. Okay. <laughs> that is some kind of deal. Oh, that looks really good. You know good. what? Real quick before we we plate this, Tom. What is this, Wendy? Can you get a shot of this? Yeah, that looks so good. That is whole grain mustard, Dijon mustard. Whole grain, and where does and what do we use that for here? I actually. Don't have the time, but I was going to make a sauce, which I already have pre-made over here. Okay. Um, That's which a brown, right? Yeah. 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 Exactly. Which is, which that is sauce. Which is the demi-glaze, right. the Madeira cooking wine, mm -hmm. and then some of the whole grain mustard. Okay. And that drizzles right over the top. And actually, when you throw it in the oven, one thing I forgot to mention is I put a toothpick in there just it's to keep it closed together. so the oysters don't pop out the side. Right. And right there you have it. So it's that almost like a, a uh, beautiful dish. When my mother used to make brajot as a kid, you had to be careful with the toothpicks. Well, I tell you what, we're going to I'm going to let Vince dig into this. No, no, this. you go ahead. Really? 